For our next uh, presentation by Stephanie Buscemi of Salesforce, we're going to get set up. And while we do that, uh, just a couple of thoughts. So uh, Salesforce, they have, of course, a show, and they don't call it Salesforce or something. They call it Dreamforce. You'll notice a similarity to the event today. Our company is called Sama, but we call it Intuition. Both events happen in San Francisco, so really close to here. And at both events, we have Stephanie speaking, so that's wonderful. Uh, there are differences between the events, and one at least is the size. But we were very happy to be, uh, have a Sama a demo happen at the Dreamforce. And while we're setting up here, it's actually to have Stephanie show us um, a demo here as well. So we're super excited to have her. She was one of the stars of the Dreamforce show. She's part of the leadership circle of, uh, of Salesforce. And uh, she leads there as Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of the Salesforce Analytics Cloud. Stephanie, please. Thank you. I'll take the size room anytime. <laughs> Much better deal. Uh, do I have a clicker? Awesome. Great. So like I said, I'll take the size room anytime. It's great to be here with all of you this afternoon. I am conscious that you've had back-to-back -back sessions and lunch. So we got to keep the energy going here and keep you all engaged. Um, I've listened from the back of the room and heard some really interesting stories really deep about solving things in, in the world of healthcare and things within uh, telecommunications. Um, I'm here actually to talk to you about end users. Uh, talk a lot about the business users that work within your teams, maybe yourself, across all industries, across all lines of business. How do we make them more productive and more effective in today's business world? We've been talking about it for an extremely long time, we haven't solved for it. And the reality is, whether you're looking at this slide or many other stats just like this one, everyone has some stat like this. The punchline is we have a data explosion. We have a ton, a massive amount of data coming to us. And we all have, the expectations are higher and higher that we're all somehow smarter in our day, that we know more about our business. And the reality is we need to make that happen for all the business users. The first foray into that was companies saying, I need a business analyst, and peppering them throughout every department within their organization. If I just bring everyone a departmental analyst, they'll have the reports and the data and the access that they need to be successful. And while that has helped, it simply won't scale for that data explosion that I showed you on the last slide. It's not gonna work. So we now know that we're gonna have to democratize this across all lines of business. And how can we do that? Yes, we're trying with data science to solve for some really complex issues like Alzheimer's, but we're also with data science trying to get to the right data, not all the data. When people say to me, I have a big data initiative, and I say, what are you trying to solve for? Well, I got a big data initiative. I'm like, oh, this is going to be expensive and long. <laughs> they don't know what they're trying to solve for. You have to have a hypothesis around this. And there's some very basic questions that every business user is trying to answer and simply can't. So if we look here today, we see across all of this here, sales reps. The days of a sales rep being transactional really are coming to an end. The expectations are so much higher for them to come in and have such a higher level of customer know-how when they go in. They simply can't come in and understand their pipeline anymore. They're expected to understand the service, the sales, the marketing, the customer sat, and they need to have that information given to them at the right place at the right time. They can't get a monthly report on that and try to cobble that together. The same holds true for that sales manager. Those sales managers are gone if they're not driving continuous growth. Some of us have all looked at the recent uh, Wall Street numbers and said, oh my god, you know, these companies have taken a huge beating on stock. And I look at myself and I say, wow, 42% growth as an example, or 50% growth, and these companies are getting hammered out there. The expectations are extremely high on growth, and the chief revenue officer of every company 
feels that the most, and they need to be able to have solutions and analytics that proactively help them move forward with the business. Where do they put the team? You just can't deploy a territory anymore. It goes on to the service reps. They can't just pass the call. They now are expected to be proactive. They're in the business of renewals. They, the customer service group is as much the marketing group as is, is a customer service group. So we see end to end all of these folks need to get insight, and yet so many of them are still working with so little. Now why is that? Why is that when we know, again, here's another interesting stat, we see here 78% of initiatives that are data driven and analytics driven, they have a 78% 70, better outcome and in terms of exceeding expectations on the outcome. That was an IDC one. An interesting one uh, is on the McKinsey side. Companies that are using analytics and being more data driven, 23 times more likely to beat out their competitors and are 19 times more profitable. Yet we still every day hobble along with our spreadsheets and we're not getting to analyze this data. We're not giving it to the end user, not to cure cancer, to answer basic questions in the organization. That is completely what we're focused on. I look at it as if we can just get even a small incremental gain on making our business users, the people who actually have the context, have the understanding of the data, they're the ones that know the business. If we can give them just that much more, imagine the productivity gains, the growth gains, the opportunity to free more time up to work on more innovation within your organization. So what do we gotta do? The analytics has to change. Some of you who are here in the room with me, we've, we've worked in analytics and BI a long time and we're probably having to check ourselves that we're here again working on this and we haven't solved for it. I don't know what the latest stat is, but I think BI analytics penetrations still under 15% in an enterprise organization, still hovers around an average of four to six tools within an organization. That tells me our jobs aren't done. There's still a lot more white space out there to get out to. Expectations have shifted. What's happening here? We've all been through this. We all lived for the prayer of reporting. We all went through the days of reporting and everyone got a set of batch reports handed out to them. Wasn't at the right place, wasn't at the right time, and you couldn't have any conversation. If you put a question back, you put a ticket in. Well, we said, well, wait a minute. Let's just usher in all these business analysts and let's give better visualizations. Visualizations became the bell of the ball the darling, if it's pretty, people will get the right answers. And then I think we all learned that visualizations alone are not enough. And so now we sit today at this intersection point with an acknowledgement in place of, wait a minute, companies run on systems of record. For Salesforce, it's a CRM system. For other companies, it may be an ERP system. Pick your transactional system. In order to make it actionable, my organization has to be, it has to be integrated back into that. Also, we're in big businesses here, small, medium, large. Decisions aren't made in silo, they're made in group. How many decisions do you make around your budget or your plans or your initiatives that you don't have a single conversation with anyone else in your organization about? So the reality is they now have to integrate those systems of engagement with the analytics, and the analytics has to up its game. Because if you're really gonna make this something great for the business user, it's not just a visualization anymore. You saw it earlier with Xena, it needs to be prescriptive. It needs to have be embedded in the workplace where you work, so in the workflow, right at the right place and time. So when you get the insight, you can actually take action on it. Think about it in CRM. How useful is it to give a sales manager an Excel report that they're opening on the road in e uh, email. So only when they're back in CRM and they're on the forecast call and they're looking at something, they can't prescribe any action easily. 
That's what we need to change for. We need to synergistically bring together these things and ensure there's predictive capability built in there, as well as things like natural language processing, because I don't know about you, I can tell you that Salesforce, our primary customer, sales, service, and marketing, the salespeople, the marketers that I'm working with, they want you to tell them. They don't just want a white space analysis graph. They want the graph, and then they want you to tell them the observation out of it, and what, here are 12 accounts that you should go after and do this with. That's what we need to get to here. So how do we get everyone on this path? What are we doing to advance this journey? I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of customers who are on the path and doing some really interesting things. And then I actually wanna show you one example of that. So the first is Verizon. We all know Verizon. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Uh, so Verizon, in particular here, this is uh, VEZ, Verizon Enterprise Services. Verizon Enterprise Services basically sold by product, some security, some networking, some content, and they've gone through a transformation where they're trying to go and sell solutions. They don't wanna be seen as just a network provider. They wanna sell solutions in an organization. Now everyone knows what that brings. That changed the marketing in their organization. That changes the type of salespeople they have and how they sell. But when they did this, what they had was limited information in an SFA. They had six different tools, and they didn't have an aggregated view of what was the white space opportunity that they could go, and what were the right configuration of products to bring together for these solutions. And so they've implemented the Wave Analytics, and what they're doing now with that is they're able to not only have the white space and have a shared view of that at every possible view. So whether they wanna see that on the, by the geo, by the channel, by a rep, by a region, by a product, they can. And then in addition, they're building into that analytics incentive compensation. They're making it possible in there now that, okay, Bob knows how to sell product A and B really well, but we need him to sell A, B, and C. And so it's helping them to inform and change what are the different incentives they're running. I know kind of old school marketing, we'd say, well, we want them to sell this spiff, so we'll do it for a quarter and we'll give it to everyone. That's not what they're doing. They're getting really prescriptive now with their sales teams about this is your white space, here's your personalized plan, and here's your personalized incentive comp to get the company, to get the salespeople to align to the uh, selling motion of the company, of what they want to see of the company. They're also sort of gamifying it. They're taking that right now and they're identifying and building out models with benchmarks associated and saying, through this, we're seeing what the best practices are and we're put stack ranking together our different sales teams. So it creates that tension within the group. Another great example, we all know, uh, leading pharma company around the globe, to totally focused on everyone's health and well-being. They had a similar situation where they could not see from the time they had a first engagement with a prospect all the way through to service with them. They just simply didn't have a view. I showed you that three-part slide. They were back on the, the system of reports. They were back on some production reports that went to an exclusive group of executives and didn't enable them. And what they've done now is they've put it Mobile, mobile was a huge thing for them. It was, I need to be able to deploy this out into those field teams, those field, field sales teams. They've put it in their hands and they've brought over seven sources of data. So of course, in this case, they're gonna leverage their Salesforce data. Their Salesforce data has huge gravity. I mean, that is one of our advantages is the data gravity we have, but there's other information they need to bring in. They need to bring in other third-party information. They're bringing in information on inventory from SAP. They have the ability to look at different views. And so now what they can do with that is do joint sales and marketing planning together with a shared hypothesis and understanding of who are their segments and then execute campaigns and territory plans against that and actually monitor that, monitor that on a near real-time basis. That's a huge, they've gotten rid of thousands of spreadsheets as a result of doing that. 
My last one that I want to share with you that's interesting is Akamai. If people aren't familiar, Akamai is a cloud, leading cloud services provider. The lifeblood of their company is renewals. They live and die by renewals. And in their situation, they have service agents who had little to no transparency, tons of data they had. In fact, they had very little SAP data. They had eight other sources of data, from data warehouses to other systems and tools. And they really needed to understand before the renewal came up, what was the consumption? Who were the competitors? What was the site performance? They needed to understand this because then they can use capacity and make sure that the client is getting what they need. They're not having the outages. They have the CSAT score that they need. They have the website traffic that they need. All of those things come together so that when they're standing there, or metaphorically standing there for their renewal, they've shown them already proactively, we've been optimizing for your business all along prior to this renewal. And what they've done now is they've taken this and they've run their business as a customer risk indicator. So every customer now has an associated risk indicator tied to them. And through this predictive model here, they know at any given time who's at risk, and then they can proactively work against that. So these are an example of just three. Like I said, we are advocating for the end user, the business user. How do we make them more efficient? How do we make them more effective? Uh, we believe that mobile is becoming table stakes. We believe that visualizations are becoming table stakes. And it's all about enabling, bringing the meaningful data together. So one being data agnostic, being able to bring all that data together in a way that people can interact with the data. He talked about a dialogue with the data, but that's exactly what it is. Because we have to think about it. There's the analytical and the non-analytical. And many of the end business users that we work with are not analytical by nature. And so if they hit a button, there can't be any downside. And that's what we've been really focused on building here, something that you can just keep drilling in. And if you get lost at any time, there's a back button. You can always go back to where you were. And so it takes the fear out of it, and it makes it more fun for an end user who used to think, like, I need my data analyst to do that for me, to explore the data. What's also important about it is that it's always with them. Nobody is going to really be data-driven and use analytics if they don't have it in front of them and it doesn't become embedded in their day-to-day -day work. And that's what we're doing here. We're making it possible, whether it's from the phone or the desktop or, frankly, even the iWatch, um, we're bringing that together and we're embedding it into core business processes so that it's at the right place at the right time and then when people get that insight, it can change the course of the business processes. We can actually go back and affect those business processes. That's what we're focused on here. We're very excited about it, and I'd love to open up for any questions.